Okay, this tutorial is going to be about adding animal prints to a picture and making them look unflat because they can look extremely flat. So it's very similar to adding a tattoo to a picture, though with a little tweaking. Um, I'll show you. So this is a picture. I've started editing for me and my boyfriend. Basically, my character, the chick, has tattoos. And I'm going to show you on a different arm than where she has them, but only so I can show you. Anyway, so make a new layer and then I would select the area I want to put the tattoo on. I mean, you're gonna have to do some selecting either way or, you know, erasing later on to get it cleaner. I prefer just to select now and get it over with. Okay, now that I got that done, I have this document over here called Leopard Brush. Basically, I made my own leopard print slash cheetah print. They're very similar, and basically, I took, got, went looking up for MySpace backgrounds, leopard print MySpace backgrounds, find, found one, and just fiddled with it and fiddled with it until it was only just black and white. Then I selected the white with the magic wand tool, right click similar, and then got rid of the white so it'd have a transparent background. Now, if you're going to use this as a brush rather than a pattern, pattern you're going to have to make sure things are transparent if you want a transparent background. Because if you have this rainbow flower and you make it into a pattern, when you go to use that pattern, it's going to have a rainbow flower. If you make this a brush, it's going to have, you know, a slightly gradiented um, opacity changing flower. If that makes any sense, I hope. Just mess around with it. To make, turn this into the brush, edit, define pattern, or edit, define brush preset. I meant to do brush preset first, but I slipped. I'm sorry, I'm sniffling. Um, my nose is like being really, really mean to me right now. Anyways, I've already done that, so I don't have to worry about that. I have the brush right here. Um, basically, I'm just going to take this size down so it's not as obnoxiously big and I'm just gonna click it two times to get the area covered with the size I want and if you were to do this as a pattern just go down you can either fill the layer yeah here we go I'll show you on this layer basically you just fill Fill the layer with whatever color you want. It doesn't matter. We're not going to be using the color. Take this, the fill opacity, down to 0%. To go over here to Pattern Overlay, pick out the pattern, and then mess with the settings and the opacity and scale even to your liking. Okay? Back to this. Now, if you want to change the color and you want more than just one color, because you can change the brush color, Obviously, if you know, if you play with Photoshop at all, you know that already. If you want more than just one color, or if you want a nice gradient, or like a weird texture to it, or whatever, you're gonna want to do this as a brush because it's a lot easier to adjust those factors when using a brush. So I'm just um, put that there, and I want to blend it a little bit better. So I'm gonna take the not the blur tool, I want the eraser tool. And just a fluffy edged brush. You know, one of those really soft edge where the hardness is like down to 0%. And just kind of erase the edge so it blends in a little better. Alright, now I'm just going to double click the layer. I'm going to take the fill opacity down to nothing. Gradient overlay. And then I'm going to pick out a gradient. And um, I'm just going to change the colors around a bit so they work more for this picture. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with the, the colors. But it's extremely flat. And um, if you're like me and you're perfectionist, you don't want it to look flat. So the way to change that is to put one on color. Alright, now copy that. This is where it's nice to make the selection and clean it up first before you start fiddling. May, so if you copy the layer, go back, double click, go to gradient overlay again, and then change it to, was it just linear burn? You can also use multiply and lower the opacity. Um, 
normal, lower the opacity. Um, depending on the picture and what color you can use, you can use pretty much any setting. You can even use like difference if you want. That looks pretty awesome, actually. I have to remember those colors. Anyways, I'm just going to use linear burn because it really clings to the shadows without getting in the way of the highlights. And now I'm just going to lower the opacity because it's too strong. That makes a blend in a little bit better. Now I'm going to copy this yet again. And gradient overlay. And I'm going to put this one on soft light. Just kind of fiddle with the opacity. Because soft light again will kind of darken the shadows and lighten the highlights. When you zoom out, it seems to blend a little better. You can see... It darkens in the shadows, and it's a bit flat in the highlights, but you can change that if you'd like. Um, for that, all you'd have to do is merge them down onto the picture, and then use like the burn and dodge tools to kind of like manually highlight the skin and such. That is the best and easiest way I can think about. I'm sure there's lots of other ways to do it, but you can also use the same method for doing clothing and such. Like, I'm going to do this little white piece of clothing here, and i got to first find out what layer it's on. Oop, not that one. There we go, it's this one. Okay, so yet again, first, I'm going to select it, this time with the magic wand tool. Make a brand new layer. And this time, I'm going to do the pattern. Actually, I'm just going to fill this. Oops, I can't fill with a magic wand tool. Right click fill. Okay. Damn it, I don't want to fill it with that. Foreground color. Okay. Deselect. Double click. Fill opacity down to nothing. Fill opacity and then you go to pattern overlay. And now you just mess with the scale. Um there we go. I'm pretty satisfied with that and just mess with the settings for this now. I'm just putting this on linear burn. That's how you can get the nice black shadows to work. I'm going to copy that again. Um, go to and put it to putting on linear burn. I'm going to put it on soft light. And you can see how that kind of really clings to those shadows and such a bit more. And that's how you can add ammo prints to a picture without them looking too flat. And I hope that helped.